Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. Hey, good morning, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. And continuing our series on antenna analyzers, next up is the Mini 60S. And this is a, a very interesting unit. It's a, a clone. It comes from China. And it's probably a clone of a clone of a clone or something along those lines. It's definitely a, a clone of a product that has been out known as the Sark, S-A-R-K 100. Uh, this is quite a bit smaller than the original Sark, probably half the size, maybe even less. And it seems to be a pretty good unit, hardware-wise at least. It seems to be a pretty good unit. Uh, it's pretty dense. There's not a lot of empty space inside these. I've seen a teardown. Uh, a person out of Germany did a teardown on this and did a very nice uh, run through. I don't speak German, but you could certainly watch the pictures and see what was happening there. And it seems to be there's, there's very little wasted space. It's a very tight case. It's an all-metal case. And uh, again, it actually seems well constructed. Uh, I've been pretty impressed with that, and it's been working pretty well so far. Uh, and so we just want to introduce this in this segment, and then we'll go into some of the functionality that it has. Uh, it's, it's basically a fairly simple analyzer. doesn't have some of the features and some of the capabilities of, say, the MFJ269CM that uh, Brian, KY4BDP, has. Uh, that was the first uh, analyzer in our series. And the uh, MFJ units are, are very good, and they have a lot of features. But they're quite large. And part of that is really just there's, uh, there's kind of a lot of empty space in the metal cabinets for those. But they're uh, obviously well-known. Almost everybody has had one of those in a lot of different versions over the years. So if we take a quick look at the Mini 60 here, we can see the front. It has the um, LED display, kind of a dot matrix display. And uh, it can do all the, uh, the main HF bands, 10 meters through 160 meters. Uh, it can do different modes, impedance, capacitance, inductance. Uh, you can have a timer as far as when it will go off. It has an automatic off function to help save the battery. as an internal rechargeable lithium-ion battery. And so we'll go through that. It's got the LED down here. It'll tell you, uh, of course, if it needs charging, if it is fully charged, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, and one of the cool things about it, uh, you can see down there at the bottom, uh, it has kind of a broad range of DC input between 12 and 14 volts, uh, center pin positive. Uh, but with this unit, it doesn't actually come with a AC adapter. What they ship are a couple of uh, extra adapters here uh, in the in the plain box, and one of these uh, is just an empty uh, proper pin, proper size uh, uh, pin for the 12 volt, and so you can connect your own adapter. And I may go ahead and make one of those up, and maybe uh, even take at least take some pictures, maybe even film that. But they they send you the right kind of barrel connector so that you can do that. And then the other thing they send you <clears throat> is uh, another connector uh, for that same same port. But what this one is, and it's going to be hard to see. I don't know if the camera is going to be able to pick this up or if I can get uh, even get the light just right. I could just barely see it on the camera. But down in there, kind of in the center there, you might see a little bit of a glint. Uh, this is actually a... Uh, antenna extension for the Bluetooth. So if I take it apart, you can see there's a little wire antenna in there. So that's actually just an extension for the Bluetooth. Now, so far, when I've been using this unit, I haven't needed uh, to really to put that on. Uh, I haven't tried any longer distances, but whenever I've hooked up the Bluetooth to a phone or tablet, um, within two, three, four feet, uh, I'm usually pretty close when I've been doing my testing, uh, it's connected just fine. I, I've not really had any kind of a problem. So I really haven't been using that, but it's uh, that's included as well. Uh, so again, if we look at the unit, it's a nice metal box. Uh, it's it's dense for its size. Obviously, it's not several pounds or anything, but it's dense for its size. It it's a, it seems like the construction is pretty nice. Again, on the bottom, we have the mini, right? It's a mini style USB connector, and you can charge it that way or connect it to a computer. Uh, again, there is the port for the AC, 12 to 14 volt range. We've got uh, supposedly security tag on the side, uh, four outer screws, and then the four screws on the top, which holds the uh, internal 
motherboard and things together. Not a whole lot else going on. Just a nice, solid uh, metal box. And then on the top, it's got the uh, SO239 connector and the on-off rocker switch. Now, this nice, uh, sort of nice little metal protective cap here, I put this on here. When this unit ships, it's going to have just kind of one of those typical plastic caps on there. So it does have a protective cap, but it just has a little plastic cap. Uh, I bought a pack of these little uh, metal protective caps, and I had a pack of O-rings from Harbor Freight. Uh, so I just put that on there. It's got the tether line, and uh, it's just a little nicer protection. And that was only six or seven bucks on Amazon for like a, a six pack or a ten pack or something. They're they're not very expensive. It's not going to be watertight, but uh, certainly I think looks nice and is going to do a good job to protect that uh, connector. So uh, again, the Mini 60. It seems like a nice unit. Now the biggest challenge here is not so much the hardware. The hardware seems pretty nice. The biggest challenge is the software. The software, uh, this is not a off-the-shelf, I'm a new person, not maybe not very technically oriented, especially with computers and software, kind of a device. This is very much, if you're hands-on and you're willing to dig in and search around forums and do some testing, uh, you'll be able to do some and find the software and get going with this. And I'll be demonstrating some of that software. Uh, it's just, that's where the letdown is a little bit. The software that, that's out there and once you find it uh, can actually work pretty well but it's, um, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge on that side of things. But the hardware itself seems pretty nice so far. Okay, So this is uh, the Mini 60S. We're going to be going over this, and this will be the second analyzer in the analyzer series. So we'll move on to the next segment, and we'll bring you folks back in just a couple of minutes. All right, folks, in this section, we're just going to show uh, fairly briefly how easy it is to connect the Mini 60S to a Bluetooth device. Now, it does have a hardline connection that we can use, uh, on the bottom, it has the 12 volt uh, connection over on the left hand side. It has that mini 60 or mini uh, USB connector there on the bottom right hand side. And those are the older connectors that predated micro USB. Uh, a lot of standalone GPS units had those. A lot of uh, other devices and phones and things had those. So I still had a couple of cables sitting around from that. If you don't have any of the mini style USB cables, you can still find those easily enough online. Go to your retailer of choice, eBay or Amazon. So to connect to Bluetooth, it's fairly simple. Now on some of the earlier units, there were issues connecting to Bluetooth. There was a previous model of this, the Mini 60 without the S. Uh, and then they came out with these Mini 60 S versions. My unit has worked just fine. The battery seems to work just fine. I've done some antenna work with it. That seems to work fine. Uh, and connecting to Bluetooth devices has seemed to work fine. So we'll, uh, we'll see how easy that is. But again, this is a buyer beware type of hardware. It's not terribly expensive, but you're going to have to do some legwork to track down the software and, and maybe get some things going. But uh, at least for my unit, it's this easy. We start the software on our tablet. We can put in a frequency. And then we simply turn on with the rocker switch on the top of the Mini 60. We just boot it up very quick. And then as soon as it's ready to go, all we need to do is click the set button one time. It'll go into PC link mode. Then we click the down button one time. And now it's in waiting for link. Now it'll go into this mode, whether you're going to be connecting with a, a physical USB cable to your laptop or desktop, or whether you're going to do Bluetooth either one. So from right here, I can simply click connect on the software on the tablet. It'll see the Mini 60 being presented on Bluetooth and connection is established and we see connected on the device as well. And so now we're in good shape. Now we have communications established. And if we were ready, we could go ahead and start a scan. You can see it actually uh, scanning and animating through the, the range there. So it's that easy to get connected and to start using this thing, whether you're going to use a phone or a tablet for this. And so we'll go ahead and close this section down right here, and we'll see you folks in the next segment. All right, folks, so now we're back. Uh, we're going to take a quick look. I've got uh, an antenna connected. This is the uh, DX Commander antenna from our uh, antenna series. We'll link to that. Uh, this is a multi-band vertical antenna. This is basically a fan dipole that's vertical, and I've got five elements on it right now. And uh, it's working really, really well for me as an antenna. We've got that review up. But I've also got some, uh, some tuning I can do with it. And so I just want to show uh, the uh, SARC or the uh, Mini 60S here uh, running a scan. I've got it set up for uh, 40 meters. 
here on my tablet. I'm running the uh, the software for that. Uh, I've got 7225 as the center point, and we've connected to Bluetooth. We showed that in the previous segment. And so let's run a scan and let's see what we get. So we can see it uh, animating uh, across the screen there. And up at the upper right corner in the software, maybe a little bit hard to see in the camera, but uh, the red is your SWR, and you have impedance in the capacitance. Not too bad. Uh, now, one of the things with the software and the way the Mini 60S works, when you start a scan, it's going to continuously scan until you hit stop. You can see in the upper right corner there's a stop button. Uh, we'll let it run for now. But you can see, not too bad. Not too bad. Now, there's a little work that I might be able to do there, uh, but it's uh, well under 1.5 or about 1.5 SWR. I think it's about 1.5 on average. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Again, I can maybe play with the length of the elements a little bit out there. I know that my 10 meters uh, need some works. I know that my uh, I've got an inverted L coming off that uh, uh, 10 meter pole. Uh, I know it could use some work. It receives and transmits pretty well, but I know it could use some work. It's, it's not hung very well, but it works. Uh, but that shows you right there. We're scanning the 40 meter band and at uh, 7.2, we're at uh, 1.52. It's uh, bouncing just a little bit, 151. There may be some wind outside or something like that. But you can see that's not too bad. Not too bad uh, on, the, on the band. Uh, not perfect, but certainly well below 2 to 1, uh, right down there at about 1.5. So just a quick uh, overview of the Android software, the APK you can get uh, for an Android device. I've played with this on my phone and on this tablet. I like the tablet. It's just a nice size. Phone might be a little bit handier in, in some ways. So uh, quick segment here on uh, running the scan on a tablet device. You can run the scan on the SARC itself or on the Mini 60 based on the SARC 100. Uh, it, of course, just has an LC, LCD display and it will show you where the best uh, SWR came up in the, in the sweep that it did. But, of course, the, uh, the graphical software is a little bit prettier to look at. So we'll go ahead and stop this segment, and we'll bring you folks right back in a follow-up segment. All right, folks, we're back for another segment. Uh, this one's going to be hopefully fairly brief. I just wanted to show uh, using the Mini 60 natively. It's got the LCD screen. And so we see it here. We are connected to a live antenna. This is the DX Commander. We'll have a link for that. We've reviewed that one in our antenna series. And it's a, uh, a five-element vertical fan dipole and so we've got the unit on 40 meters uh, right at the start of the 40 meter band for a general class license here in the u.s uh, 7175 exactly but we're at 7180 and we can see that we're getting a reading of about 1.52 not too bad there is a little room for improvement potentially uh, but uh, pretty usable band and certainly any tuner uh, in your radio would take care of that but uh, most likely that wouldn't cause much damage anyway so that's the reading we're getting native on the device. Uh, let's go ahead and plug it in to the PC, and we'll see if we can get a similar reading with one of the software packages available. Now, the software on PC, that's where things get a little dicey. Uh, they're a little bit inconsistent. They tend to be older uh, software, and I'm not sure there's any current development on them. Sometimes they work pretty well. Other times uh, you have to fiddle with things a little bit. But let's just switch over and see what we can do. So let's go ahead, we'll uh, turn off the Mini 60 for now. We'll uh, plug in our USB. That'll create a COM port for us. Turn that back on. We can hear Windows picked up the USB uh, device being attached. We'll go ahead and come back out. Try to smoothly move you folks back up to the monitor. Make sure we can get the software window in there. Uh, so we can double check. Now, usually on my system, COM port 9 gets created. So if we right click on the start button, go to Device Manager, this is Windows 10. Let me bring that down. Uh, and hopefully, we can see that. There is a COM port created, and sure enough, it is COM port 9. It may be a little bit small, but that's what it comes in. You'll have to double check on your system, but it'll probably be pretty consistent once something is created. And down here on the, uh, the desktop, 
We've got the application. We'll start that up. You bring that down, make sure we're reasonably in the frame. And it has a COM port listing in the upper left. Let's switch over to COM port 9. Connect button right below that. So let's put the Mini 60 in connect mode. We hit the set button and then down. Now we're in connect mode. And we can click connect in the software. And we show that we are connected on the Mini 60. And the software shows that we are ready for a disconnect once we're ready. We're on the 40 meter band. Let's run a scan and see what we get. So hopefully we can see the animations coming across. It's coming down nice and fast. As we get towards the usable band for at least a general class license here in the U.S., look at that. Pretty much flattens out at 1.5 across the board, almost the entire band. And very, very similar result to what we had on the device natively. We were seeing about 1.52 at 180, um, and it probably would have gone down maybe to 1.51 in the middle part of the band. So the PC software can be a little bit cranky, but it, it does sometimes work just fine. Uh, you just, this is a very hands-on project, folks. You're going to have to dig around, look around. It's uh, buyer beware. I think the hardware's fine. Uh, Android application's fine. Native use of the device is fine. Using the PC software, I wouldn't want to do a lot of heavy lifting with it. Uh, maybe some occasional use, but I'm not going to use it that way very much. I'll either use the device native or I'll have my phone or a tablet handy and I can connect it to that with Bluetooth, as we've demonstrated in one of the other segments. So we'll wrap this one up, folks, just showing off the software a little bit, and we'll uh, wrap up the entire series here, and we'll see you folks in the next one. There's plenty of options out there. This one's not that expensive. It's, uh, they tend to run about $120. Uh, the Nano VNA we're going to be taking a look at, those run $50 to $75. And those are very interesting devices. They can do a lot of work, actually, beyond sort of relatively simple antenna testing. Uh, we'll be talking about, again, some other units. We're going to be talking about uh, built-in units. Uh, Brian has the ICOM 7300, and it has a built-in SWR meter. We'll be talking about that in this series as well. So this is Chris, KY4CKP. We'll wrap up this uh, segment for the Mini 60S and 73.